the exam hall, yeah. everybody was just looking. And then there are some software like answers where you can do simulations. Engineering math will show you. Shit. Every out there, welcome back to this channel. Right here today, we are a 500 level automotive engineering student. Hi, my name is Adia Yofumilayo, a student of automotive engineering department, 500 level. What sparked your interest to study automotive engineering? I wanted to do aeronautics initially, but we don't have many aeronautics options okay, in Nigeria. Okay. So I decided to opt for automotive instead. Share you know some projects you run, like some projects you did while you are some automotive engineer students. Mm, okay, there are a few ones that I really enjoy. Okay. For example, in 200 level 1, we did our swap. Okay. We did a charger project. It's a charger project. Is it a charger for a car? Or no, a, charger a phone charger. Okay, phone charger. Wow. So they drew the circuits on the board and okay. then we followed it and mm. then we did the putting it together wow. and then we was able to actually charge the phone. Yeah, actually, phone. For five volts. Five volts. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. So was it Type C or this type of charger? The iPhone charger? It was not. No. So it's just a regular charger. Okay, just a regular charger. Um, not Type C. That regular. Okay, one. just regular one. Wow. Yeah. And then the recent one, like mm. that's my project right now. Okay. Is a device that is going to detect when a vehicle is about to roll over. Okay, vehicle is about to roll over. Yeah. Wow. So it has like a sensor, okay. like an actuator. So when okay. it senses that the vehicle is no longer stable, okay, and is at a risk of rolling over mm. so it beeps okay and then he tries to alert the driver to okay. try and stabilize the vehicle before vehicle. he gets out okay. of hand so to prevent yeah. uh, this um, accident exactly and roll over okay but that's very nice so, so i really like that very good it's a very good safety system in the vehicle that's very nice so yeah. as a female student in automotive engineering can you tell me some things that you face you as a only female student because i know that automotive engineering is only made that usually occupy the art section yeah, it's a very it's a male dominated industry. Okay. But then we are two females. Okay. I didn't really face any discrimination in school, maybe among my uh, yeah. classmates or lecturers, yeah. no. But then when during IT, mm. it's not like discrimination per se, but then you okay. know because you're a female, they may tell you not to carry certain things yes, which yes, I understand yes. for safety purposes. Yes, safety purposes. And sometimes when people just come to the workshop and they look at you, they're ah, What's this girl doing here? Yeah, what this really, what is this remarks, kind of right? Remarks. It's not really like for discrimination purposes, mm. but for like I feel it, like exactly it encourages yeah. you in a way, mm. and then you don't want to just sit back because you're a female and just yeah. for example, anytime we go to the workshop for any practical, yeah. I'm not just going to sit down and just say because yeah, I'm female, you want to stand let out. the guys. I want to do something as yeah, well like, as we're like losing the boat. Everybody's losing yeah, boat together, wow, so you have nice. to get in boat. Okay. So are you participating in any IT? Of course, we've been doing IT since 100 level. Wow, that's very nice. So, what are your experiences as an IT student who has worked for IT? First, IT was in 100 level. Hmm, I did nice. it at Elizade Motors. Okay, Elizade Motors, not correct. Yeah. That 100 level, you know, now 100 level days, you're still doing mathematics yes, and chemistry. All those 11 courses. Exactly. Mm, so, when I got to the place and then I didn't really understand much, I'm not even going to lie, I didn't really gain much in that 100 level this okay. thing because it was just too much information at yeah, the time. Too much information at the time. Yes, exactly. Yes. But then moving further, we did SWEP, we did IT in 300 level, okay. we did in 400, wow. the one for six months. Wow. So the fact that I was consistent with the IT program, yes. I got better and better. Okay. So now if I go to the workshop, I'm not going to be as confused yeah, as I used to be. So, I know so can you tell me some insights with something like, let me say, within wow. all those your IT period, what have you learned that you know that <laughs> if I give you a vehicle now, you can I can help you service your vehicle. You can service your vehicle. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you can change your engine. Yeah, wow. change your engine or change mm -hmm. your brake pad. Wow. I can nice. change brake line with a little supervision. Wow, mm, very nice. Wow, it's very beautiful. It's very rare to see a female working on the vehicle. Yeah, because yeah, you know, six months now, you for six months straight, you still have to do a little something. Yes, yes. I remember my first three months during the six months. Okay, I did it at um, Elizade in Akure, okay. and then the workshop, they we only have one technician at that time. Okay. So I was like the support system. Okay. Whenever there was major things, yes. I really want to maybe service the vehicle wow. or change brake parts. Mm, very nice. Yeah. So that, that, that scenario gives you a means of trying to know what I gave you confidence. Gave you confidence. Wow. So now you can take care of the vehicle now. I just say a little bit. Exactly. Wow, very, very nice. So aside the unique. Y, the X in class, mm. at least I know I can yeah, see. Yeah, you can know you can see now. You know how to do one or two. Wow, that's yeah. very okay. Okay, Fumi, are there any um, specified area in automotive engineering that um, you are interested or passionate about? You know what I'm saying? Well, there are a couple of um, areas, but the one I really like the most is the control system aspect, okay. where you solve a problem using some kind of 
old. Wow. For example, the project I'm doing, uh-huh. I keep referring to it because I really like it. Okay. It's when you know, when your vehicle is about to roll over and then it just senses it, it senses it and yeah. then it sends an Signal. information to the driver. Yeah. And there are so many I feel like this kind of um systems okay. that's like the bridge of technology where we are putting the technology together with this automotive thing. For example, right now there are some devices that can sense when the driver is drunk. Oh. Wow. Yeah. It's going to sense when your driver is drunk and then it's just going to disconnect the vehicle so that the vehicle is not even going to start. Wow. So this kind of system, I believe that's the future. Yeah, that's the future. Exactly. Like just like autonomous vehicles. Exactly. Like so I really like that control system aspect. Okay. Since you are in Elizabeth University, mm-hmm. how has Elizabeth University sharpened your brain in this type of industry, you know? I think automotive engineering is just three in Nigeria, right? So Elizabeth University is a private university. Yeah. And so how could you in terms of infrastructures? Recently at our workshop, mm-hmm. um the school provided a vehicle, like an entire vehicle for okay. automotive students to practice on. So anytime we have a certain practical, mm. let's say our topic for this week now, yeah. let's say the topic for this week is um, transmission system. Mm-hmm. We're not only just going to write the theory and just draw the diagrams and parts. Yeah. We actually go into the workshop. They show us where the gearbox is, yes. how to the mounts, how to the um, dismantle, how to assemble, how to wow. roll an engine, all these wow. things. So they actually get our hands on this practical. So I think it's really nice. Okay, but what's your best course? You know, we have several courses you take, you do take from your hundred level to five mm-hmm. hundred level. So, what course is your best course since I've been, you know, since we have done, you have done your best part in practicals, but in theoretical part, what and the most hardest one to? One of my best course, not like best, but the ones I really like. Like, okay. Okay, recently we did engineering economics. Wow. So it's like bridging the gap between um, engineers and then the engineering okay. industry. How as an engineer, when you make an invention, how you can protect your intellectual properties, okay. how you follow standards and ethical morals as an engineer, so you wow. don't get your license revoked and all those things. So I really like it because I like business. <laughs> <laughs> so so anything that has to do with money. Yeah. I really enjoyed the class. That's one of the classes I enjoyed. Okay. When it actually comes to the worst. that, oh, the worst. Yes. I'm not really going to tag them as the worst. <laughs> okay. But the courses that were really challenging. Mm. Okay, there was this course in 200 level, material science. Okay. That course, it was just, it was tough. I don't know how to explain it. Wow. But it was just, during the exam, mm. that's one of the, um, this thing that I cannot even forget, like, the experience during, in the exam hall. Okay. Everybody was just looking. He was wow. just crazy. That's one of the challenging so courses. And then fluid mech as well. Mm. Anything that's to do with fluid mech. Mm. And then as an engineering student, especially when you're in mech or automotive, mm. you do fluid mech every session. Wow. Exactly. So and every session it gets more advanced. So wow. yeah, it's a little tough as well. I don't want to say that I hate it's it, but it's a little tough. Engineering maths will show you shaking sometimes. <laughs> so you have to be prepared not to scare you though, but yeah, engineering maths as well. And we did that in 100, le- no, we didn't do it in 100, I think 200, 300, 400 for semester 500. Le- no, we didn't. So engineering maths will show you a little shaky, but. Wow. Since you are a female studying this um, course that is dominated by men mm-hmm. or by gentlemen, so as to say, what advice do you give to female, other females that are watching this channel that want to come to Elizabeth University to Thank study you. this particular course? Do you have some encouragement? First of all, you don't have to get intimidated because you don't have to, you don't need to. Nobody is going to intimidate you. As long as you, you're, if you're passionate about this, you can achieve this, that period. Wow. It's not about, okay, because it's male dominated or no. You can still kill it, even as male. So you just have to be focused. And then when, I think in within the school, actually, there's not really any discrimination. At least I've not faced any. Okay. So you don't have to worry about dis- getting discriminated. Mm. But then when you go into the world, there are some people that they are just... Um, conventional people with old brains so when wow. they tell you that okay this is not something 
we're female what are you doing here like it's not an industry where they are used to seeing many females but, but that's just your opinion you know you, you know belong purpose, there yeah. exactly <laughs> so you don't need to let those words get to you because okay. people say it all the time well not all the time just some men actually i'm not even going to lie they will actually encourage you they'll find it so fascinating like wow i really like that i, I they feel so happy seeing mm. males there and females there but there are some men that would just be like mm, I wouldn't let you fix my car or something. Because but, just a uh, but you don't have to let that get to you because you, as long as you're passionate about it, you can just do it. What advice do you give to students out there who are preparing to come to the university to study automotive engineering? Okay. My advice to you is even if you're studying automotive or elect any course at all, you have to be focused. And then you have to know why you are here. You don't want to get carried away. Yeah. I don't want to sound like a motivational speaker right now. But <laughs> these are just basic things. Okay. For example, you don't want to be missing too many classes. Okay. There are some people that they don't really care for academic um, success. Yeah. Some of some people will tell you that they don't really care. They just want to go. Pass. Some people will just say pass is enough for them. And if pass is enough for you, then it's fine. But if you really want to come out with a first class, second class, or par, you want to really do well. You have to your attitude towards learning is going to be different for somebody that just wants to pass. Okay. So you cannot afford to be missing classes all the time. Mm-hmm. You want to be doing your assignments, you want to read. Maybe reading every day is not feasible, mm-hmm. but at least you have to put in the effort. And then you can do it. And then I believe hundred level is the best time to actually lay the foundation for your success. That's one of the best advice I've received in this school. 100 level is when things are still very easy. 100 level is like an advanced secondary school. Most of the courses you do are still like chemistry, physics. Yeah. Some of them you already did them in your secondary school. So you only need a little bit of push to actually do well. Okay. So in 100 level, if you can lay that foundation and have a very strong CGPA to start with. Because as you go further, things get harder. Wow. So once you already have that foundation, it makes it a lot easier for you to actually achieve your academic goals. Yeah. So that's my advice. And then if you're already in 200 level and 300 and maybe you didn't start well, I still believe you can still do well. From where you are, you can still build something. It's never too late until you say so yourself. As you said, focus. Exactly. Focus. You have to be determined. <laughs> exactly. Okay, Fumi. Since uh, you have been studying all this while, I, I think there must be an involvement of softwares that you used to run some coding that allow you to make some, you know. Okay. But then there are some softwares like Ansys where you can run simulations. Okay. Before you, they actually use it in the real world. Wow. Let's say you want to do a design. Maybe you want to design a piston. And then before you actually go ahead and design, unlike in the olden days, the conventional way was to design and then test, design and test. There was a lot of um, trial and error. But right now, there are so many softwares where you can run the simulations and use some of those boundary conditions, whether you want it to be able to absorb a certain amount of temperature, okay. all of these things. Combustion, exactly. Yeah, you can absorption. include those factors on that software. Okay. And from there, you can vary your material and then know which one is going to be best for your design before you actually start to do okay. design. So, okay. softwares like ANSYS, we use ANSYS in... 400 and 500. We oh. use answers and um, that's like the only software we use concerning simulations. Okay. But then there are other softwares like Proteus, like Fritzen. Oh. Fritzen is a software you, where you can do an electronic um, circuit, mm-hmm. put together circuits electronically, and then you can see how your this is going to look like before you start getting your breadboard. Okay. And you're before you start making your actual connections. Wow. So there are so many other sources like that. Thank you, Fumi, for coming out today to share some insights. I hope you left a lot of gems. There are a lot of gems <laughs> inside this video. You know what I'm saying? For automotive engineers out there, you want to come to this other university to study. This is your time. So thank, thank you, Fumi, you. once thank again you for, for coming out. Thank you. I appreciate it. Did you